Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about Valentine's Day. I have put together 20 of my best Valentine DIYs for you in this mega video. I hope that you enjoy them. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing and becoming my crafting BFF. If you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I love this project and I love that everything came from Dollar Tree. So I'm taking this little um, heart banner that you see there and those little wooden drawer boxes and also this little tray. Now I my Dollar Tree, I found this tray over by like the dishes and the charger plates and things. So you could easily leave it the gold color, but to match my decor, I'm just giving it a couple coats of some white paint. Spray paint would probably work much better than chalk paint, but it was too cold outside. So that's what I did. Now I'm just taking the outer part of these three little drawer boxes from the crafters corner at Dollar Tree and I am just going to give them each um, a nice staining with antiquing wax you can easily use any type of brown paint with a baby wipe just to make it look like it's stained now I am taking three hearts off of this little heart um, garland or banner whatever you want to call this but I'm just taking three of them off of there I want to make the back of these the front for my project so I do just sand off a little that little bit of glue that is on there and then I'm going to paint these the colors of conversation hearts so I do like a light pink a light green and then a very pale yellow. Now I'm taking some barbecue skewers that I had painted with the antiquing wax and just gluing that onto the back of all three of these, as you can see here. And now I'm going to put a little bead of glue all around the outside of the heart on the back and just place it down on some brown crafting paper. And I'm just going to, with anything you have, just kind of smush that glue in to make sure it has a firm hold. And then I will just kind of cut that heart out and then just sand around the edge. This just makes the back of it have a very finished look. So if anybody were to see the back of it, they wouldn't be able to tell like that it had all the glitter and stuff on it from Dollar Tree. Now I am taking the stencil that I also got at Dollar Tree and just some pink paint. Cause when I think of conversation hearts, I think that pink is the color that I feel like they're written in the words. So that's why I chose pink. And I just stencil all of my letters. I do one heart, one letter at a time. So it has time to dry in between, but I do XOXO, hug me and kiss me on all of these. I take a little bit of floral foam and just use a little wooden stick there to cut, like a craft stick to cut through the floral foam with, and just cut a little piece big enough to glue down in the bottom of each of these. And I just hot glue that to secure that down. So that way that's not going to be, you know, flopping all around or anything like that. So I take each of the hearts and stick them in the floral foam and I decide that I want to change the height. So to do that, I'm just using my wire cutters. It's barbecue skewers, so you could probably even use a really strong pair of scissors or something like that to cut those off and get them the height that you want them. And then I just use some Spanish moss to cover up that floral foam in the base there. And so now I'm just taking my cute little tray and the tray would be completely optional. I just thought it was kind of fun to have it be like a cohesive look. And I have these little wooden heart stickers from Dollar Tree that I decided to put on the front. I just left them the plain unstained wood because I thought that was a good contrast. The Spanish moss was looking a little bit like drab and plain to me. And so I thought it would be really cute to kind of layer some of this little berry garland in there. And so I just wrapped that a little piece of that around to the bottom of each of these. I think these turned out so cute. I absolutely love these. Now for the true debate. Let me know down in the comments if you actually like to eat conversation hearts or if you think they're gross. I personally like them, but I like most candy. So let me know down in the comments. I'm totally loving the cutting board craze right now and I have been looking for some little cutting boards and sometimes you're lucky enough to find some cheaply at Hobby Lobby or somewhere. Haven't seen any at Dollar Tree yet like this but I'm hoping eventually they get something like this other than I guess they have the one they had at Easter time but I have not been lucky enough to find that. Anyway I did find this on Amazon. I'll leave a link in my description box below. I, I want to say they averaged out to be about two dollars a piece. There was like six of them in the thing um, but I'll leave a link down there. They're very thin, very flimsy. They are definitely just for crafting, not at all for using as an actual cutting board. But as you can see, I'm just taking some scrapbook paper and I put some of the glue stick all over the front of that cutting board, turn it over onto the paper and then cut the shape out. And then I will just go around all of the edges with my 
fingernail file here. This just makes this look like it's made, like that scrapbook paper was made to go on the top of there. You wouldn't be able to tell that it was glued on or anything like that. You can Mod Podge if you want. This is just going to go on a tiered tray or like tucked in my china hutch so I don't really need the Mod Podge, but you definitely could Mod Podge if you wanted. But I am taking this little wood heart that I have from Dollar Tree and I do just stain it with some antiquing wax and a baby wipe. And then of course I like to take my needle nose pliers and just beat the heck out of it and make it look really, really distressed. The key to making this look like it's an antique piece of wood is after you do make like your little pock marks in it with the needle nose pliers and stuff and kind of really distress it is to go back in with your antiquing wax or your brown paint that maybe you're using with your baby wipe and just kind of saturate those areas to make them look darker so it just looks like it's been aged over time. Now I am just taking some of these little wooden stickers that I have also from Dollar Tree and I just take the Kiss Me and I am painting it in a very light pink that kind of matches the scrapbook paper. Of course, the fun thing about this is you can tailor it to your style and like the decorations that you're doing with your scrapbook paper and with the colors that you're using. But I do just use some hot glue and glue that heart kind of at offset at an angle onto the cutting board and then I will take some super glue um, and glue because it's so delicate, the hot glue just seeps out from these little letters. So I take some super glue and I glue that on after the wood heart has dried. And then I take some of this little berry garland here and just kind of wrap it around so you can still see the kiss me. And then I'll just use some hot glue in the back to make sure that that stays affixed there. You could definitely leave this, but I felt like it needed some type of little like bow or something at the top. So I start with wrapping some jute twine around and then just tying that off in the back. And then I also have some of the baker's twine, like the red and white um, baker's twine, which I feel is so cute for Valentine's. So I also wrap some of that around doing the same thing I did with the twine. And then I will just make a little teeny loop bow using both the twine and the baker's twine. So like the jute twine and baker's twine. <laughs> and I wrap that around. And then once I get my loops, I will just take another piece and tie it off in the center. And that gives you the perfect little shoestring bow. And you can wrap it around as many loops as you want to do. I can't remember how many I did, but I thought it looked a little bit cuter as a little bit of a thicker bow. But I just use a little dot of hot glue on the back and then glue that on top of the twine. I think this is so cute and so rustic. I love that that heart is a little bit off center. I think this would be so cute on a tiered tray in a kitchen or really anywhere for that matter. I always get so many comments asking where I bought this particular project. So I love that I can say it's something that I actually made. So I am just taking an arrow from Dollar Tree's Crafters Corner section and I'm using some different sizes of half beads as well as some craft sticks. And I will go ahead and leave a link to the half beads down in my description box if you guys wanna know which ones I used. And I'm just drawing a straight line so when I go glue these on, it will they will stay straight. Now I use a combination of E6000 and hot glue on these. Hot glue would probably be sufficient or wood glue would also work since these are both like the unfinished wood. So even super glue would probably work fine. But I am just taking some craft sticks and I am cutting a couple of different sizes to make some little um, tails on the arrow there. I'm not really sure what that part of the arrow is called, but I am just making a lot of embellishments on this. So when I paint it and distress it, it will uh, look really cute. And I'm just playing around with the half beads there to kind of determine where I want to place them. Them. I originally was only going to do the ones down the center, but it looked a little odd to me. So I pulled out these smaller sizes and these I'm just using hot glue on to go through and just glue them in a line right around the point of the arrow and then again on the back of the arrow as well. The next thing that I do is I just cover this completely in white chalk paint. You could use whatever kind of paint you wanted. Spray paint would work really well too. You just wanna make sure that you get in between all of those little beads. It is a little tedious, but a little brush will work really easy to get in between there. And I do end up switching over to that. Again, if you did spray paint, you wouldn't have to worry about that at all. 
The next thing I do after the paint has completely dried is I do go through and I sand and distress this. So again, it's optional how distressed you want this to be. I wanted this to look extremely aged and extremely distressed. So I go through with a lot of different sandpaper. Since I made this arrow, I have switched over to actually using an emery board. You guys have probably seen me use that before. So I think that would work a lot better than just the sandpaper. And then I going through and I'm going to take some elephant chalk paint right here. So whatever gray color that you like to add more distressing and I just lightly dry brush that all over to give this that really aged like dirty antique look <laughs> I just think this turns out so chippy and so cute and it's perfect for Valentine's Day because Cupid has his arrow and so I just love putting it out it's very subtle but it is also something you could leave out all year I was so excited when I found this metal letter at Dollar Tree. I grabbed it and then had no idea what to do with it, but the little wooden heart stickers fit perfectly inside the little imprint of the heart, and so I'm excited to use that. So I just removed the hanger from it, the little twine hanger that came on it, and I am just going to color this or paint this in white, just like a traditional envelope would be. And so I just go over it several times, let each coat dry, but it does take three or four coats to make sure that metal is all coated and I get the thickness that I want because I do want to distress this. I'm using my new little heat tool that I got here for Christmas. So I'll leave a link for that down below if you're wondering a good one. I have been really, really happy with this one. And then I just take this little wooden heart and I'm coloring it red. I thought, you know, since I'm doing kind of the red and white, I thought it would pop really, really cute on that white letter. So whatever color you wanna do, or you could even leave it natural wood or stain it. But I just take an emery board or sandpaper, whatever you like to use. And on these raised areas of this envelope, I am just going to distress them really well. I want that metal peeking through. I think it gives a lot of definition to this. And I really like the contrast. This is super simple, that paint where it's on the metal, it comes off quite easily. And this is why I wanted a thick couple of layers of paint on there. And so it really did look kind of chippy, I guess is, is the word that I'm going for. And I go around all of the edges as well. These little wooden Dollar Tree stickers have these little foam adhesives on the back. And I have since learned that if you just stick it on using that, it will stick, but maybe only for like a day or two or a week or so, and then it will just randomly fall off. So I just remove that and then use some hot glue and get that down in. Now, of course, you wanna just make sure that what heart shape you're putting in there is the size that fits in there before you get to the part where you glue because you don't wanna mess it up at that point. So just make sure that you've, you've dry fit, I guess, your little heart into that little area there. And then I have this little red and white baker's twine, which is so cute to use for Valentine's Day with the red and white. So I just thread that through the little hole several times there. I just use some painter's tape on the end just to make sure that that can glide through the hole very easily and I can wrap it around a few times. When I started wrapping this baker's twine around and here at the end, I just tied a knot off and then used some hot glue. That's what's holding it onto the back in place. You could easily tie it off too if you wanted to. And then just by wrapping some baker's twine around a couple of fingers, I'm just making a cute little shoestring bow. I like the thicker shoestring bow for this. So, I mean, I looped it around five or six times maybe. And then I'm just going to tie that off in the center and trim my little tails. And then I have to sit and decide if I want it in the middle or if I want it on the side. <laughs> I ultimately decide that I want it on the side. I think that in the middle it competes a little too much with the heart there, but I really like the texture that the bow adds. So that of course is optional as well, but I think it looks so cute. I love how this turned out. Again, this is something that could be for a tiered tray, something on like a shelf that you have in your home that you could just kind of tuck it in. It's so thin and it's so lightweight. You don't have to worry about it falling down. It's just so cute and it just screams Valentine's. I absolutely, I, I'm in love with how this turned out. I just think it's so simple and so cute.
This cute little chalkboard stand came from Dollar Tree and at Hobby Lobby, I found this little tic-tac-toe set that I got when it was 50% off on their wood sale that they have every couple of weeks. I bought it with the intent of using the X's and O's for XOXO for Valentine's. Using some painter's tape or masking tape, I just tape off the chalkboard portion of this sign and I am just going to paint the frame in a red color. I thought that would be super cute for Valentine's. This way I can get on the inside portion of the frame, get right up close to it and not worry about paint getting on the actual chalkboard portion of the sign. I decide to paint my letters in a white color because I really want them to pop with that black background and the red frame. Of course, you can tailor this to whatever kind of decor. I know a lot of people steer clear of like the red and white. They kind of use more muted tones or pinks or just soft colors. So it's very tailorable too. Is that a word, tailorable? I'm not sure. <laughs> you can tailor it to how your decor is, I guess is all I'm trying to say. I do take some antiquing wax and just kind of dry brush the edges of these before I glue them on. That way they stand out a little bit more. I just feel like it adds a little bit of distressing, completely optional. I To get these as straight as I can without using a ruler, because I don't know, sometimes I just like to eyeball, well, most of the time I eyeball things. I start with the first letter and then the last letter, and then I do the two in the middle to make sure my spacing is good. And I'm just using some hot glue to glue this down. This is gonna be perfect for a tiered tray or just anywhere that you want to have it set up. I just love those bold X's and O's. I think they're adorable. And I think this is definitely a project Project anyone can do. But how do you guys think this one turned out? I think it's super cute. For this project, I am going to use some of this removable wallpaper from Dollar Tree as well as this cute little heart sign. I am just going to remove that metal part of the sign and the little bow on that because I'm not going to need that for this particular project. But I'm just going to flip over that removable wallpaper and I'm just going to trace the shape of the heart. Now I'm going, I'll show you what I have to do because this heart is a little bit bigger than this wallpaper, which is going to be just fine because we're gonna have enough of the scrap left over that I'll be able to kind of fill it in and you'll see how how I do that here in just a moment. Now this is just like a giant sticker, so this little removable wallpaper, so I'm just lining it up after I tear the back off as best I can with my heart. And then you're just gonna rub it down making sure there's no like air pockets or bubbles or anything like that. Now you'll watch what I do here. I'm just taking the scrap piece that I had cut off from this removable wallpaper and I'm just matching that up. And when I press this down, after I cut this out, you will not even be able to tell there is a seam there at all. Now I just cut this out as close as I can to the heart itself and then after I do that I will go back in with my fingernail file, use whatever type of like a sanding block or finger sander or sandpaper, but you'll just go in a downward motion making sure that you get all of the edges. That is what is going to clean this up, make it look very high end and like it is actually like a piece of wood with that design on it rather than you know like the little cardboard thing from Dollar Tree that we stuck the wallpaper on. So that is very important. Now I'm just taking some of the greenery that I have uh, in my stash. A lot of this came from Dollar Tree. I think all of it actually came from Dollar Tree now that I'm looking at it, but I'm just kind of putting together a little bouquet, if you will, that I think looks good with the heart. And then I am just going to piece that together here and then wrap some twine around the bottom to get that all tied together like a bouquet. Now I do tie this off and then I do go back in and make sure the end is completely covered. I just wanted to make sure to tie it off because that was a lot of twine I was wrapping around and I would hate for it to all come undone and have to do it again. So that's why I stopped maybe like three quarters of the way through, but I did go in and finalize the end of that little um, bouquet you can see here. So that way the end it all looks nice and there's not any of the stem sticking out. So now I just play around with the placement of this little bouquet and I am going to tie some twine around the entire thing and then wrap it around several times. Now you may need to put a little bit of hot glue on the back to hold your twine in place and that is totally fine. And then I also put this little metal heart also from Dollar Tree. I just tucked that in because I thought that was a cute little element. 
I also glued a little piece of twine onto the back so that way I could hang this so it would be like more of a door hanger. But look at how cute this looks. I think it looks absolutely adorable, perfect for a cute little door or even just to set up somewhere. Very low key Valentine's. This is one of my most favorite projects ever. So I got this little three heart hanging decoration at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to separate all three of the hearts and then I'm going to remove the red tinsel from each of the hearts. After that's done, I am going to take some painter's tape and I am going to tape the surface of all of these hearts. So you can kind of see how I'm doing that here. You can wrap it around, you can do it however you feel. You just need a surface because we're going to be hot gluing onto the top of these. So you just need like a solid surface for the glue to stick to. So now I'm just taking some reindeer moss and I am using like a pan lid or something to kind of contain it. And I am cutting it up so it is like confetti, like very little be very careful not to cut your fingers and then I am just hot gluing onto the surface of the heart and I am just going to push some of that reindeer moss into it and you can kind of see some of the different ways that I get the reindeer moss to stick here but after you get like a little bit of like a patch that's gl um, glued on there I will just take my scissors and kind of manicure it or trim it up and you can kind of see how I do that and I used one bag of reindeer moss for each heart that I did and I just go in little section after little section. Now you would probably need, not probably, but you're going to need more if you want to do the back of these. So where I have these in my house, I did not do the back of them, but so, and reindeer moss is sometimes hard to find at my Dollar Tree. So I couldn't find any more when I was doing this. So I just had to do with what I had. But you can kind of see, I just go all the way around and you kind of get to just go inside there, see how I'm making that like a defining heart shape. You kind of get to go in and, and do that. And you just make sure all three of those get done the same way. And then I just take a wooden dowel that I got at Dollar Tree that I stained with some antiquing wax and just glued that onto the back of these. And then I'm also taking a little bit of painter's tape and I'm putting that, I don't know, I just felt like that might secure it a little more. Um, but here you go, this is what it looks like. I just stuck them in some little Ikea plants that I have and the three of them are so cute for Valentine's Day. I love how these turned out and I just think they're so fun. Dollar Tree has these really cute new signs that have this really cute little chipboard frame around it. And I have, this is a February picture out of one of the Dollar Tree calendars from this year. So all I'm gonna do is just remove that little border from the whole picture so I can work on the back and have like a, a clean surface. And then I have this is some removable wallpaper that I buy on Amazon. It's like five or $6 a roll. I'll leave a link to it down in my description box if you're interested in checking it out. But it makes the perfect background for things. So I'm just cutting it to size and then I just remove the back and I am just going to put this on here and that way I have a, a perfect faux wood finish. I just go ahead and smooth out any bubbles that maybe came up in there. Just use like your uh, Cricut scraper or like a gift card, anything to use. Just be very light because you can rip this very easily. And then I do just sand around the edges to give it a crisp look. Now I am just taking this little truck right here on this cute little paper and I am going to completely just detail cut it out. So I'm going to get as close to the actual like design as I can so that way it looks like this is part of the piece that I'm putting it on. You could just embellish it as is, but I did use my Cricut and cut out something that said, Hello Valentine. This was just found in Design Space, and I just thought it was really cute. If you are one of those lucky people that have beautiful handwriting, you could easily do that on here. I love using my Cricut for instances like this. I know not everybody has one, so there's definitely workarounds, but um, I just, I cannot freehand things. You guys know that if you've been here for a minute. <laughs> so I go ahead and use just school glue, the purple glue stick on the back of my truck and I smooth it out very gently on the paper there. And now I am just going to attach these little borders on. And so I just put a little bead of hot glue all along the top and the bottom and then I fit in the side pieces.
After I got to that point, I realized this needed really some other type of embellishment or something on it to kind of break it up a little bit. So I am just taking various ribbons that I have that are Valentine looking. Some of them are actual Valentine ribbon. Most of these are from Dollar Tree or Walmart. Uh, I'm just using what I had on hand. The ones that say like XOXO or this little one right there, the red with the hearts, those were from this year from Dollar Tree. And I'm just, I, they're probably about seven to eight inch strips that I cut of each of them. And then I just kind of arbitrarily placed them down there and then I'm just taking some twine and I'm just going to tie this off in the middle and then I will take another piece of the smaller ribbon to kind of make the middle piece. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. So here I am gluing that middle piece to cover up the twine and I'm just using some hot glue in the back to make sure that that is secure. And then I will dovetail the ends or cut them at an angle or slant just to kind of make the ribbons all look super pretty and ready for the project. And then I just use some hot glue and I just think of it up in the corner that looks super cute right there. So I just place some hot glue down and stick the bow down and call it good. I think this turned out so cute. I love how that bow looks on this. I think that for just a couple of dollars, I mean, really, I'm probably three or four dollars with the ribbon that I had on hand. And I just think it turned out so cute. I love this one. This, of course, is just a sign I have left over from Christmas, but it's really cute because it kind of has like the wooden slat look to it. So I'm just removing the little ribbon that you would hang it with, and I'm going to turn it over and work on the back. Now, the, you can definitely put some craft paper on the back of this. Just use some hot glue around the edges and cut your craft paper to size. That will cover up that Christmas design on there. And then I am just using a little bit of spackle to cover in those holes because I'm not going to be hanging this. I just want this as a sign to prop up against something. So I let that spackle dry and then I do sand it down and then I'm just going to give this a couple of really good coats of paint. Just however many coats till your heart's desired for the coverage that you're looking for. I have this darling love sign that came from Dollar Tree. So I am going to be putting this on our main sign so I don't need the little twine to hang on it. So I just take that off. Now this is literally rough around the edges. Like it was very kind of like had a lot of little pieces hanging off of it. And honestly, I was afraid I might get like a sliver or something. So I just took my little file and went all around to kind of smooth it up. And then I'm just taking some antiquing wax on a baby wipe. I love how this looks on wood. You guys know I do this all the time and I just I love the rustic color that you get from it so I just go ahead and cover all of the letters on the front now since this sign is going to be 3d you're going to see like the top the sides the bottom of this love sign I decided to just go in with a brush and I stain like the top the sides and the bottom everywhere with the antiquing wax so that way it doesn't show like the really light color of wood so that way it looks like it's all cohesive In the crafter's corner, I found these cute little heart cutouts. I thought they were darling. So I did decide to paint this just all over with a red color. You're not going to see the back of it, so you don't need to paint the back, but I just, whatever color of red, or if you're not a red person for Valentine's, you know, a cute pink would be really cute. I just wanted something to pop with the brown stain and with the white paint. So now I just go in with my ruler and I make some of my wood lines just with a Sharpie marker. And then I take a paintbrush with, and, and it doesn't have a lot of paint it's just left over from painting the sign earlier and I just kind of go over those to kind of lighten them a little bit I am all about distressing things. So this is a, like a personal preference or an option, but I just thought it would be really cute to kind of sand the edges on this heart since it did have that really cute like bevel around the edge of it that I thought it would kind of make the detail stand out a little bit more. So I just go around that with my fingernail file. You can use, you know, whatever you have just to kind of make that pop a little bit. And then I just put some hot glue around the edge of that. And then I put that little heart on my love sign at an off centered way. I thought that looked really cute to do. And then I am just uh, taking a little bit of twine and I glue it on the back and then wrap it around four or five times and glue it on uh, the back. So that's how, what, how it's staying, if that makes sense. You can kind of see there. And then I thought this would look really cute to kind of put off center on the sign here as well. Um, I don't know, I was just kind of feeling that vibe that day. So that's why I did that. But just some hot glue on there. I pushed that 
that down, let it dry, and then I do take a little bit of twine and just make a little finger bow with several different loops on it to put on the heart, kind of like it was tied up. And then I felt like it was a little stark, so I did just take a little bit of the antiquing wax on my brush and grow, go through on the sign. This is what it looks like after it's completed. I love how it turned out. I think that it's so cute. You definitely wouldn't have to do the back portion if you didn't want, if you just had that love sign. Any elements of this I think you could do without if you were missing one or something. I think it just turned out darling. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about it being kind of off center, off kilter like that. If you like that, if you're more of a person that likes things level. If you're lucky enough to find the little set of wooden hearts at Dollar Tree, you would not have to do this, but I could never find just the plain wooden hearts that come in like a four or five pack of like little ornaments. So I found this little clover that had these hearts on it. So I am just using my little putty knife to peel off one of the hearts of that. And then it does kind of leave it pretty ragged on the back. So I just kind of have to cut some of the wood away, but that's all right because I'm going to be gluing it onto another side surface so you're not ever going to see the back of it so you basically just need one wooden heart <laughs> to use so however you need to get that do that now I am taking a charger plate from Dollar Tree and I am just going to coat this completely in white paint. Spray paint would work too, however you need to get your surface painted, but I just do a couple of coats to completely cover the marble. Now if you did like the marble you could leave it like that and if you did find a white charger plate you could easily use that too. So the finish I use on this heart is just some antiquing wax with a baby wipe on here. You guys know I love how this looks, so I use it a lot, but you can easily use any type of brown acrylic paint, just water it down a little bit. I feel like the moisture from the baby wipe helps kind of give it that stain look also. I also wanna put some half beads for embellishment around the plate, so I also take some half beads and stain them as well. Now I did measure ahead of time. I put all the half beads around the charger to make sure I had the right number and that they would all fit. I wouldn't get like to the end and need like a half bead or something like that. And so I do know how many I need exactly to go around, but I just used some hot glue and one at a time next to each other. I just go around the entire exterior of the plate and line it with those half beads. For the last step of this project, I just take that stained wooden heart, make sure I like how it looks on there, and then I'm just using some hot glue and I just place that down in the center of my plate. This is such a cute decoration to have. It's perfect for a very subtle, rustic valentine, something you could leave up year round. Definitely a decoration. I, I just love how this turns out. Okay, this might seem extremely unconventional, but I have a feeling you're gonna love how it turns out. So I am just taking some pink lemonade that I got at Dollar Tree, and I didn't even measure my water out. I just filled up my measuring bowl all the way up with water and dumped all of the pink lemonade into it. And now I am just pouring it into a big Pyrex dish. I am also taking some of these paper doilies that I also got at Dollar Tree. They're like in the wedding section and I am just laying them into the pink lemonade. I'm trying to dye them pink because I want to make a pink wreath out of them. Now at this point when I'm pulling some of these out, there's like pieces of them coming out. I'm like, this is not going to turn out, but trust me, it totally does. So after you hang them all out to dry, and I mean, I hung them on my laundry rack, everything, I'm going to go take this heart wreath form and you can freehand a heart shape if you'd like. I honestly, I've done these wreaths on cardboard before. This is foam core board, but I just want that heart shape and I want something flat with a surface I can hot glue the doilies to. So I take the doilies and I fold them like in half and then in half again so it makes kind of like this little triangle shape and then kind of fluff up the doily lace looking part and I'm going to go around the outside edge of the wreath form first facing all of the doilies in the, the like the lace facing out if that makes sense so you can kind of see what I'm doing here and you honestly just scrunch the doilies up and then you'll just hot glue and get them to stick and you just have to wait maybe like 10 to 15 seconds on each doily to make sure the glue has dried before you move on to the next one. So 
So after I have gone all around the exterior of the wreath, I am now moving to the interior and I will do the opposite as far as I will face the lace inward this time as I go around inside to make this look extremely full. Now there's different sizes of different doilies so you just kind of will match like the exterior with the bigger ones, the interior with the smaller ones uh, works best. So however works, I mean there really is no extremely wrong way to do this you just kind of do it so it looks nice but I love how this turned out I put it on my pantry door and it looks so cute it's just so fun you could also stain doilies like in tea or coffee to get more of an antique age doily look but I just think this turned out so cute for this project, I have this cute little laundry sign that was from a thrift store or garage sale. It was probably very cute in someone's laundry room, but we are going to give it a refresh and a makeover to be a Valentine decoration. First things first, I'm going to give it a couple of coats of a white base paint, so whatever color you would like your base to be. And then I use two inch painter's tape and tape off some stripes. And then to paint my stripes on, I'm doing those in a light pink color. I just put a little bit on my sponge brush there and I will dab lightly up and down each of the little edges of the tape there before I go back in and fill in the middle. I feel like this really does a good job at sealing off the tape there so you don't have a lot of bleed through. And I've had a very high success rate, maybe not 100% foolproof, but I feel like it works most of the time if that makes sense. I have this really cute wood love sign from Dollar Tree and I took the little hanger off of it because we're going to paint it with this gold color here and I absolutely love how this turns out. So I'm just using a little brush and I am going in the same direction as the wood grain on here. I feel that that gives it the most smooth look but I just go carefully over all of the letters and then I do all of the edges too since this will be so three dimensional on our sign you'll be able to see it from all the different angles that that gold color will show through on all sides. Now I go back and I take all of my painter's tape off from my sign and the stripes look really good. Now you do, um, the texture is not so smooth because your paint is a little raised where the stripes were. So I do go over it with a little bit of sandpaper. Now I have this beaded garland here that I got on sale after Christmas time from Walmart. And I'm just taking it and cutting a little piece off because I thought a little beaded hanger on the top there would be really cute rather than just a ribbon or something. But whatever you have, or you could easily string beads if you wanted to do. I just thought the beads looked really cute with the sign. So I'm just tying that off on both sides. To make sure that that stays tied and doesn't come undone, I do put just a little bit of hot glue on there. That just helps the twine stay so it doesn't come unfrayed and then not won't come untied. And then I'm just using some hot glue on the back of the love sign there. And I will do my best to center it. You can measure if you want. You know that I like to do the eyeball method. And I just press that down and then that's it. I absolutely love the vibe and feel that this sign is giving. It is so like romantic and precious and I just, I love the little stripes with that gold color. I think this is perfect for Valentine's. For this project, I'm going to use these beads that came from Hobby Lobby. They are $6.99 regular price, but wait until they are 50% off, or you can paint your own wooden beads and string them as I was just showing you there. And then I have these cute little hearts that came from Dollar Tree also, and I'm just going to stain them in some antiquing wax. And then I am going to thread these beads onto some uh, twine after I have decided the pattern that I want to do. Now, honestly, I had no idea that you could find beads like this at Hobby Lobby. They were in the jewelry section, and I don't normally go in the jewelry section but my daughters were really wanting to look there one day and I saw these beads and thought those are perfect valentine colors and then just got thinking about it thinking I wouldn't even have to paint beads I could just make a garland and not have to go through that process because sometimes painting beads is really a pain so I just decided to lay these out in this particular pattern and then after I did each row of beads that you can see there I would stop and tie a knot in my twine with my heart that I wanted to dangle and you easily could just slide the heart on you wouldn't have to tie the knot I honestly don't know 
what I was thinking when I did that, I guess, because I didn't want it to slide all around. But but definitely, if you're going to do this, you do not have to tie the knots onto the twine. Just feed your thing on your like heart on there. And it should stay when you do your um, put your next section of beads on there. Hopefully that makes sense. This is just going to make sure that it doesn't slide around or, or get misplaced or anything like that. And I just go through the whole process of the whole strand of beads to do this. Once I have finished my garland here, I just make a loop out of the excess twine that I have on each end. So that way I can hang it. I have a spot in my house where I do hang a beaded garland from, and I kind of change it up for different holidays. And I just use a couple of those like command hooks on either side is in front of a mirror. And so that's why I'm doing the loops is so it'll be able to rest on that. And so I just do that on both ends. And then I thought it would be kind of fun to make a little tassel to go on the ends. You definitely would not need to do that. But I did that by wrapping some twine around a little square that I had several times. And then when I pull it off, you can see that I use one of the craft sticks and I just kind of use that to keep my upper loop. And then I just wrap that twine around, tie it off. And then I'm just going to cut the end of my tassel to make the little fringe. A little trick once you cut your little fringe on your tassel there, um, sometimes the twine wants to kind of be a little bit funky and go every which way. If you spray it with a little bit of water, I don't completely saturate it. I mean, I guess you probably could, but I just spray a little bit and kind of get it into the position that I want it. And it will, uh, over like the course of a day, straighten out and be very straight. So just a little tip for you. And then I just kind of thread that onto the end and tie those tassels on there. And here's my garland. What do you guys think of this? I think for not having to paint these beads and get this effect with the cute colors for valentine's i am elated that i didn't have to do that process and i think this turned out so cute these little houses are so popular and so in right now and they have three different sizes that i've seen at dollar tree i believe this is the middle size of the ones that i have seen and so i am just giving the back of this i flip it over and i paint the back and the sides just give it a really good coat of white paint i'm doing for my base but you could do whatever color you want to tailor it to what your decorations are Next, I am taking a couple of craft sticks that I have stained with some antiquing wax and I am just gluing them together at a point. And then while the glue is still pliable and um, not wet, but it's hot, I am just going to uh, work that to match the angle of the house and then glue that down on the top there for my roof line. Now I did use my Cricut and I cut the word home out. You could easily do love or XOXO, whatever you would like. I wanted to maybe leave this out, not just for Valentine's Day. So I put the word home and then I'm just using a little stencil to make the red heart, but you could easily use any of like the wood stickers from Dollar Tree or anything like that. And then I just make a cute little bow to put at the top there. And I think this just looks so cute. It is just very simple and perfect for Valentine's. So I have this piece of wooden sign left over from Dollar Tree, but you can definitely use any type of wooden uh, shape or scrap piece of wood that you have. So I'm also, you can see in the upper left-hand corner there that I'm also using another piece of scrap wood that I have. I'm gonna make a couple of cute little like Valentine love letters. I th I've seen these um, on Pinterest and on Instagram and things. I thought they were super cute. So I'm giving my take on making some. So I'm just kind of eyeballing the size that I want and cutting this down to what seems like would be an appropriate size of letter. Um, I couldn't see the exact measurement there, but I can put it in my description below if you want to know the exact measurements of these. But really, I mean, it's a letter. Whatever size of wood you have, you could easily make work. Even with like the bigger paint sticks, I think you might even be able to make one. But I thought it would be really cute to have two, one larger, one smaller, and display them together. I gave both of my little scrap pieces of wood a good coat, a couple coats of white paint. Um, that's the color that I want my envelopes to be. And now I am just making those little envelope fold marks. I use a pencil and a ruler first to make sure that I get really straight lines and kind of can eyeball it before I commit with a Sharpie. And then I have this little heart that I cut out from some scrapbook paper that I have. And you'll see on the larger one, I do use one of the Dollar Tree wooden heart stickers. and. You can see there that I kind of made a mistake or didn't like where I had that. I was able to erase and you couldn't see the erase lines at all. 
but I do just go over with a Sharpie using my ruler to keep those lines very straight. And then I will go back in and just erase the pencil lines so that way you can't see any of them um, shining through. That would be completely optional because I do end up going over with my fingernail file and kind of sanding this a little bit, give it a little rustic look. But I just used some purple school glue there and seal my little envelope. And now I am taking my larger piece of scrap uh, wood there and I'm just doing the same thing getting the measurements and the lines on that and I'll just go through and you can see that bigger heart that I'm using there how cute that looks and then just the same thing with the sharpie go over the lines to make them dark and then I'll erase the pencil marks And this is where I decide that I wanted to kind of rough it up a little bit. Completely optional, not anything that you would need to do. It just kind of fits my style a little bit more. And so I did that. And I do go over on the other one and kind of do the same thing on it as well. So now I just take that little heart that I also kind of sanded around the edges on it. And I just use some hot glue to seal my little envelope there. How cute are these little Valentines? Who would not want to receive a cute Valentine like this? You can just imagine the cute little love letter that might be inside. I just love these. I think they're cute and I love that there's two of them in different sizes. I think that kind of adds a fun little element. Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. I'm going to make a cute little window display for my tiered tray. So I just take one of these little grapevine wreaths that I got in a section of like five or six from Hobby Lobby. And I am just going to cut the top there and just kind of bend the little sides in to make it a heart shape. And then I just kind of keep pushing it together and then use a little bit of glue to make it kind of stick just to give it that more of a heart shape. And then to get that to stay once I get the glue to dry and you can kind of definitely tell now that it's a heart I take a little bit of twine and just wrap it around the little point that comes down and tie that off and that's just going to help make it stay and it gives it that real definite heart shape So now I am just going to paint this window. Now these windows are some of my favorite things to do. You can find these little windows in the dollhouse section at the craft store. Um, at Hobby Lobby, I know you get like three of them for about four or five dollars. Um, and they're so fun to customize and make um, cute little tiered tray decor out of. And then I'm just using a couple of Jenga blocks also. And that's going to be uh, the base that's going to hold the window up. And then I'm just taking some of this little vine berry here and then I'm just wrapping around this cute little heart wreath that's just going to bring that little touch of red in there and so I just go all the way around with that. I got this darling little door hanger at Dollar Tree and it had the most adorable little heart bells that were hanging from it and I've used pieces of it in other projects and everything so I have these bells just kind of left over so I take one of the white ones to place in the middle of the wreath that's just going to make it pop a little bit give that more definition of a heart shape there and I just thought it looked really really cute. And then to get the wreath to stick to the little window, I'm just using hot glue and then I am just going to hold that down until it is completely dry. And that way I can make sure that it stays. And then I'm just using the Jenga blocks on the base of the window to make sure that it can stand when you place it on the tiered tray. And I believe I put one here on the front or, and one on the back and one on the front to give it a little stability because that wreath does make it a little bit um, heavy in the front. So it kind of wants to tip over. 
And then of course this is completely optional, but I do just take a little bit of antiquing wax on my brush and just kind of dry brush that on all the little window panes to kind of give them a little rustic look. I think this is just the most adorable little window. It is perfect for a Valentine tiered tray. I love how the color turned out on the little berries on the wreath. I just, I'm in love with this. So I have these little items. They're all from Dollar Tree. Uh, the base here, the square, is actually the back of a puzzle from the child section. I don't know why I don't turn it over and show you that. And then the heart is just from the crafter square and then the little berries. So on the back of this puzzle was a little, little red stamp that I just sanded out and then I just kind of sanded the entire back to kind of make that match. And I'm just taking this little heart and using some spackle. That way I can make this a solid piece because I'm not going to hang this heart. We're going to glue it onto the puzzle and that's going to be the background. So I just make sure that I fill in that hole completely. And then I'm just going to stain this background with some of the antiquing wax. You can also use any type of paint that you would want to stain it with. You'll just water it down a little bit and just use a baby wipe to wipe that on and that's going to make sure that it gives it that stain look. So after that spackling has dried on the heart, I just take it and sand it and make it nice and smooth. And that way you can't tell that there was ever a hole that was drilled there. And then I'm just going to take the heart and I'm going to paint this in a white color. Obviously match it to your decor, whatever you would like to do. I just thought where I'm gonna wrap the red berries around it, a white heart would be cute. A pink heart would also look really cute as well. And just make sure I give that a really good coat of paint to cover up all of the sides. You don't need to paint the back of it because I am going to glue it to the base. And of course I lose some footage here or forgot to record or something, but all I did was wrap that berry around the heart there, like I'm showing. And then I went around the edge of the heart with a dry brush and some antiquing wax to make sure that it kind of had that dimension and rustic look. And then I just used some hot glue to glue that down. So I'm just showing you there, there's a lot of hot glue and I just held it down really good. And on the back of that puzzle, I just used some craft paper to make sure that you couldn't see any of the shapes. I think this is so rustic and so cute. I love this. It's going to look so cute on a tiered tray. You could also put a little thing on the back to hang it with if you wanted to hang it somewhere also. This is a super simple project that you can do with one of these little slide out drawers. Now I'm just going to be using the outer section of this drawer and you can easily use any type of cube or shape that you have. I'm just going to be using the other part of this drawer in another project that I'm doing for this tiered tray. So that's why I'm using this, but any type of cube will work. I'm just gonna make a cute little heart Valentine dice to put on my tiered tray. So super simple, I'm just going to paint the base coat of this white. It takes, you know, two or three coats to get this wood completely covered. So whatever base coat that you're using, I thought the white with the red would be a really cute contrast for Valentine's. And I have these little hearts. Um, you can get these at the craft store. I did buy like a big bag of wooden shapes at a garage sale. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled when you go to garage sales. You can always find all sorts of interesting things to be able to use for projects. But I do know that Dollar Tree has the little heart-shaped stickers that are the wood uh, stickers, and I do use a couple of those in this little project. So uh, even Amazon, you'd be able to find like a bunch of little hearts or something. So they're pretty easy to find, but I don't have enough of them to make like a true to life dice. So you'll have to forgive me that the numbers are not in the correct places they would be on a traditional dice. So if that bothers you, make sure you have enough. Um, I just kind of wanted it to kind of look a little cute on there. So it didn't really bother me, but I'm just making four little hearts right here on this shape here or this side here. And then you'll just see on some of the other sides, I'll put three. And then I have some bigger hearts that I'm using to do like a single heart and then like a, a double heart for the two. I think this turned out so cute. Nobody's going to know that it is not a solid cube because that empty space is gonna be facing down, but I think this is gonna be such a cute little pop on a tiered tree. 
This DIY is so cute on a tiered tray, but it would also just be perfect for just a cute little like on a shelf or sitting on a coffee table or something. But I am just taking one of these door hangers that I got at Dollar Tree. It has the little heart shaped wire um, element at the top and then it has these cute little adorable bells hanging from the bottom of it. And so I'll use those bells for other projects and I just remove the cording from the heart shape. And then I'm just taking um, some different types of greenery that I have from Dollar Tree and I am going to wrap it around this cute little heart shape. First what I do is I paint it with a little bit of um, burnt umber paint to kind of cover up that metal color. I realize now that probably wrapping it in twine might be a better option um, just know that the paint will kind of scratch off as you wrap the greenery around it so you'll have to go back in and touch it up with like a little brush or a q-tip which is fine I'm just letting you guys know that those are a couple of options I definitely use my little silicone finger protectors for this because I'll glue like one end of the greenery onto the little heart wire and then I wrap it or after that dries I'll wrap it around and if I feel like it needs to be glued in the middle I will otherwise I'll just glue it on the end after I wrap it around. Most of the greenery has wires in it so it wraps around it very very easily. I had this little insert box from one of the little cube bo drawer boxes from Dollar Tree's craft section that I'm using and it is one that has a heart shape on the front. So I take a barbecue, well this isn't a barbecue skewer, it's one of the little wooden dowels that you get in the package of like 12 or something that I glue onto the back of the heart and I paint it the same color as the box. And then I just painted that box with like the antiquing wax just to kind of stain it. You definitely personalize it to whatever color that you wanted. So since this box has a little heart cut out, I did just take some white cardstock and I just glued that in so that way it would make the heart pop. You'll kind of see I do a little something else with that here in just a moment. You'll see what I do. But I'm just taking some floral foam and eyeballing it and it honestly I'm just taking a craft stick to cut it and it just kind of like cuts right through that stuff. And then I'm just taking some hot glue and we'll glue that little square down inside our little planner box and then just kind of eyeball where you want your dowel to go. And then I'm just using some Spanish moss to cover up that little bit of floral foam there so you won't be able to see that. And now I'm just taking a little bit of this little teeny berry garland and I thought it would look really cute like it needed a little something extra. This would completely be optional if you like the greenery look but I thought this would look really cute wrapped around it and kind of bring in that little bit of a red you know tone for Valentine. So if you want to leave it up year round without the red in there you easily could but I just take that and just go in and out and around until I feel happy with how that looks. I just think this is turning out so cute. And then I have um, those little hearts from some scrapbook paper that I had and I just cut out a little shape of the heart and then I just using my little purple school glue, I just glue that right into that little heart. I thought that kind of added a little cute touch there and made that little heart pop. Here it is all complete. I think this turned out darling. Like I said, it's perfect for a tiered tray or even anywhere else that you wanted to just bring a cute little Valentine touch. So I have this darling scrapbook paper that I bought at Joann's and I thought it would be really cute to make a little shadow box. I also have this little metal heart left over from a prior project. It came on one of the Dollar Tree signs for Valentine's Day. So I am just going to trim the paper down to size of my little shadow box. Now you can use a shadow box base of any type that you have on stock or on hand or if you like you find anything at Dollar Tree. I just happened to find these little shadow boxes at the fall sale from Hobby Lobby for like 90% off. So I paid less than a dollar and I got like five or six of them but they are great. So always keep your eyes peeled at stores um, when they're having sales to find good bases of shapes for things because sometimes you can find deals way better than Dollar Tree. Anyhow I just take my purple glue stick and I glue that scrapbook paper on and then I just take a little wooden cube from Dollar Tree that I had from a package of like 20 of them and I glue that onto the back of the heart and then I'm just going to hot glue that onto this base here and that is what is going to give that heart a little bit of a pop for our shadow box. So now I'm just taking a chip brush and dipping it in a little bit of white paint and then dabbing that off on like a paper towel to make it pretty much dry. I want to kind of really dry brush this and just to kind of make it pop and brighten it up a little bit for my decor. Give it that little bit more of like a barn wood look and so I just go around all of the edges doing that. 
This was a perfect way to use that scrapbook paper. I think this is going to look so cute on my tiered tray and a perfect use for that little heart that I have. What do you guys think of this one? I would like to thank you so much for taking time to watch this compilation make a video. It really means a lot to me. Did your favorite make the list? Did you see something new that you enjoyed? I would love to know down in the comments, either one of those. I always love reading what you guys enjoy seeing. I hope that you have such an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.